a technological step forward in cryptocurrency. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Bram Cohen, creator of BitTorrent and founder and CEO of Chia Network. Welcome, Bram. Nice to be here. So what does Chia do, and what prompted you to start the company? Oh, uh, we are making a new cryptocurrency called Chia. Uh, the, uh, the genesis of the company is I am a protocols engineer, peer-to-peer -peer protocols engineer of some renown. And uh, cryptocurrencies are this new thing. And they're a very nascent technology, uh, with, which has a lot of problems, lots of opportunity to be improved on and made better. And I really got interested in working on those problems. So uh, it quite specifically uh, working on how distributed and or not distributed and how wasteful Bitcoin is and improving those problems as well as improving the general problems of um, custody and such in Bitcoin that it kind of feels like carrying around suitcases full of hundred dollar bills when you use it. So uh, these are things which are in many ways very technical problems with very technical solutions and I really love working on interesting technical problems. So uh, that's what we're working on. You actually just released a green paper detailing significant technical step forward in cryptocurrency. So talk about that. Yeah, so in, uh, in Bitcoin, it, uh, there's this process called mining, which extends the blockchain forwards. Now, the whole point of Bitcoin, the whole feature that it really has is that it's a secure decentralized database and it really is actually decentralized, no nudge, nudge, wink, wink, someone actually running the whole thing and claiming it's decentralized like a lot of the <laughs> upstart competitors are. Um, and that is based on uh, this one weird trick that it does, which is uh, there's this thing called the blockchain, which everybody gets a copy of. And the way everyone comes to consensus about what the current blockchain is, is it's actually expensive to extend the blockchain. It, it costs real money to put stuff on top of it. Uh, and there's this mechanism by which the weight of the blockchain that you have can be locally audited. You can just check it by looking at it. Now, do it using uh, what's called a uh, partial hash collisions. And uh, that works really well at making a security centralized database. However, it means that a lot of resources are expended building on the blockchain. You have this uh, thing where there are computer, there are warehouses full of computers burning electricity, doing uh, nothing whatsoever. I mean, not literally nothing whatsoever, usually nothing whatsoever. They're printing lottery tickets once every couple of minutes. Somewhere on earth, one of them prints a winning lottery ticket, uh, but that's really all they're doing. So uh, this is, uh, there are two things wrong with this. Number one is it's very wasteful, which isn't a day-to-day -day problem uh, in Bitcoin, but is just kind of gross. And number two, which is much more scary from a day-to-day -day standpoint in Bitcoin, is it winds up being nowhere near as decentralized as you'd really like it to be. Uh, some people get have access to better hardware or uh, cheaper power, and it winds up being that a relatively small number of entities could uh, basically just take over Bitcoin uh, right now. And so you'd like that to be better. So uh, there's a question of like, well, how do we improve on this? And you can't really get away from there being some kind of waste here that's really fundamental to the thing. But you can kind of thread this needle very carefully where uh, trying to just fiddle with details of the problem doesn't really work very well. Uh, you need to tap into some resource that's already very over-provisioned, uh, that's already very widely distributed, and that you can then utilize at no extra cost. And it turns out there is such a resource, it's just storage capacity. People have lots and lots of over-provisioned storage capacity. It's distributed among many, many different parties on planet Earth. And uh, well, then the devil is in the details. Then, then you get into this problem of, okay, well, how do we make it so people are doing these proofs of space, is what they're called, without uh, using any extra resources and in a way which is actually secure, which actually achieves consensus through the network where nobody gets any sort of economies of scale by pooling together. 
uh, on it. Uh, and that is a very, very difficult and very technical problem. So there's this high level plan <laughs> that I came up with, this approach, which is you combine proofs of space with proofs of time and you stitch them together in just the right way and you can make this all work. And so the green paper that we just put out explains how they're all stitched together. Uh, and we also just put out our proof of space construction. Uh, and we had previously put out our proof of uh, time construction called uh, verifiable delay functions. Uh, so this really is all the building blocks necessary to uh, put together a proof of space based uh, uh, blockchain. Along with the technical adva technology advances, you're also launching a, a competition uh, with the goal of establishing a developer community. So talk, explain how that's going to work. Uh, yeah, so uh, we are we're we just released our proof of space primitive, and there's we have a pretty good idea of uh, how best to implement it. But what you want with these things is for everybody to be on a level playing field. That all that matters is how much space you have. And in order for that to happen, everyone needs the best possible implementation. Because if someone has some algorithmic trick that gets more use out of their same resources, that gives them an advantage. So in the interests of getting this as distributed, get, getting this out there and available to everyone, we have put together a we hope pretty good implementation of our proof of space primitive. And we're doing a competition of who can do the best implementation, both in terms of how compressed they can make the files and in terms of how quickly uh, the, those files can be generated on our reference hardware. Uh, this is related to, we've already done uh, similar competitions for proofs of time and we will probably do more in the future for that, and had uh, pretty substantial uh, improvements uh, in how fast those could work uh, from the broader community, like f far beyond what we could have done had we just tried to pay some people to do it. So the, the competition format works very, very well uh, for these sorts of things. We're, we're giving out $100,000 in prizes. Nice, that's certainly a nice uh, amount of, uh, of prize giveaways. Why did you decide to use an open format for the competition? Oh, uh, the, the idea here is everything we're doing is open source. Uh, we're Apache licensing everything. Uh, it, this is not a proprietary system. The whole point is it's a decentralized system. The, once the thing we're building is launched, we as a company could just disappear and it would just continue to function. That's the guarantee that the actual technology gives you. And obviously being proprietary technology would not be, <laughs> would not be helpful for that. You mentioned uh, this is a success. Is a success. How are the entries judged? Um, uh, we have a benchmark piece of hardware, uh, and we have defined what the primitive is. Our competitors aren't iterating on the design of the algorithms; they're just iterating on the implementation and how fast it can run on this particular machine that we have. It's it's sitting. Um, <laughs> the, um, you can't see it from here. It's, it's in a utility closet. But um, the, uh, uh, this makes everyone be on a playing field. So this is an objective benchmark of how well things are implemented. Uh, in the future, for the, for the proofs of time, we're going to start moving into hardware-based competitions because those can be implemented faster in hardware than in software. But we want to see for, first finish squeezing everything we can out of software implementations before moving on to the hardware ones because those are much, much more expensive. Bram Cohen, creator of BitTorrent and founder and CEO of Chia Network. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to enter this competition or get a copy of your green paper, how can they do that? Well, they can see all the stuff we're up to as a company uh, at chia.net is our homepage. And uh, I can be reached uh, most easily on Twitter. I'm Bram Cohen on Twitter. Sounds good. Thanks again, Bram. And if you guys want to find me and more of my interviews, you can do that right here. Or Go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.